And like, she wasn't standing on nothing. Trump was at least standing on stuff. Like he had clear. He told you what he was gonna do, what he wanted. She was like flip flop, like she ain't, she wasn't standing. She wasn't standing on nothing. Like society getting soft. Like everything's so soft, sensitive, filtered and all that. And then you got Trump, he gonna say what he want. Like regardless, he don't really got no filter. He gonna say what he want. As far as the right, there are a lot of young men who see themselves in the examples that they're seeing on the right. They see principled people, whether they come from the same religious or social background as they do. Uh, they see people who are about their family. Um, on the left, you see this notion that a family can look like anything other than a man and a woman. And there are a lot of young men who don't believe in that. They don't agree with that. In other communities that decided to side with the Republican Party, and I don't know everything, but one of my theories is because we're not meeting the needs of average, everyday um, working citizens. People are telling you groceries are too high. People are telling you that um, rent prices are out of control. They will, you know, tend to hedge toward conservatism because those clips speak to them better. The Joe Rogans of the world, the, you know, the, all those, you know, kind of conservative clips that they listen to or podcasts that they listen to speak to them. We She's win a train wreck who is totally unqualified to be the president of the United States of America. There are some people who thrive under pressure and there are some people who crack under pressure. She's a cracker. <laughs>《Lottie Y'all Don't Like Trump》， but I just gotta say this man that made a lot of sense when he said it's a fucking disgrace that we ain't got no money to help the people at home. That's just my take. So what y'all are seeing right now is Atlanta essentially being done with Kamala Harris. Those are all clips of Atlanteans. And mainly were former Democrats saying they aren't going to vote for Kamala because she doesn't re re represent them. So they have gotten themselves in a pretty bad situation where they can't depend on their base anymore. And out of Atlanta, which isn't the only metro city that we've seen Trump gain some pressure in. Trump currently is getting a lot of love in Dallas and Miami. He just won Miami Dade, which is the first president, I think, since 1989 to do so. So things are looking super good. Although our numbers didn't look as good as I wanted it to with black men, like 17%, 8 to 9 with women. I believe majority of them just didn't vote Democrat. And that's proven because you see a lot of them, that's how they were built. And we have to educate, uh, this is for the black people listening, got to educate our brothers and sisters that, hey, your vote is important. Even if you're in a state where you feel like your candidate can't win, they need your statistics. Because, like I say in my other videos, if there are statistics that point that you're voting, and whatever demographic they're going to start promoting to that demographic they're going to start coming to your communities they're going to start trying to work with you because they see you willing to work so you got to make yourself known got to make yourself heard so they know that you exist and atlanta's doing that uh, i got a good friend and content creator named shaney rich he's out there in atlanta doing a lot of great content and he breaks down all the time how these atlanteans are turning on a democrat party or have turned and it's something beautiful. It's something that they've created theirself. We should be happy about it. I'm happy about it. And I'm ecstatic. But it's a long time coming. This was always the party for Republicans. Which party made the first Republican uh, congressman? Which party made the first Republican senator? Which party existed right after the Kansas-Nebraska Act to fight the Kansas-Nebraska Act? It's all Republican. Which party elected a black man to have his first slave? Democrat because he went up to the Supreme Court and his name was Anthony B. Johnson, the first slave owner in America was a black man. He went up to the Supreme Court and he argued that Anthony Johnson, I believe it was, it's one of the names of his slave that he had. He had two and he had three indigenous servants, two white ones, one black. And he argued that a black one steal property because he owed a debt to him. Through that contract, through that conversation that he made with the Supreme Court, which was Democrat at that time. Or it was Congress. You look this up. They deemed that he was able to own that black man, making him the first slave owner in America. All this stuff is Democrat. It's always been our enemies, and it's time for us to go back home. Which I say, 
Maybe it's time for white people to move forward, but it's time for black people to go back. Because we were better in the past. Look at our old videos suited up, not touching each other before the Democrats put their poison in our community, before the Civil Rights Act in 1964, which Lyndon B. A. Johnson, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson confirmed to have to alter the Civil Rights Movement after the death of JFK. Completely changed the projection of black America and through Democrats implementing drugs in our neighborhood. They've done a lot to damage us. But in addition to all this bad news, we have a lot of great. We also have very prolific rappers such as Kodak Black coming out to Trump uh, rallies now and showing support, which he's been a staunch supporter of Trump, but it's out in the open now. It's a great thing. And my message is very simple. Make your problem right here in Uniondale. Make your problem. <laughs> Look out, look at that. We want them to make their product. Right there, China's building some of the largest auto plants in the world. And they What a brilliant clip. Just such a beautiful clip to me. Kodak Black getting love from those supporters, man. And she said, we'll promise we'll make Haiti great again. That's what this party is all about. You know, truly embracing each other. And I can see that really touched him because he was worried about the comments with Haiti and worried that it was going to reflect him and his people. But to come to the Trump rally and they said, we're going to make it great again. They hug and embrace. That's what it's all about, man. And that's what the things that's changing the culture. Those videos like that with Kodak Black are raw. Black men are coming in droves to support Trump and the conservatism as a whole. Trump is what brought them in. You know, like Trump, what lured them in. And now they're saying, oh, man, I stand on these values. I like these values. This protects my family. This protects my daughter. This protects my future, my bloodline. It makes a lot of sense to us. We've been down so long. For it's time to try something new. Uh, also time for you to try to please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can stay updated on my next video. Until we break the next narrative, thank you.